Chorus B there is a material that contains pores, and these pores are usually regarded as voids. So how do we actually get stress drain data from this kind of study? Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Okreke. Welcome to CM Videos. This is a YouTube channel where we try to help you create effective computational modeling solutions to whatever computational problem that you're dealing with. So the first thing is we need to look at how complicated this problem is. So basically this is our, our system. The length, original length is L0, but we need to be aware of what's happening here. So the reaction force acting on the system and the displacement will be extracted on this front face, which is our reference frame face that we're using. The surface area will also have to be extracted on that face. And the problem here is that our surface area is an irregular surface area. So it's an irregular surface area. So what do we do when we're working with an irregular surface area? We can just sum up the length times width times height because that would be inaccurate. So I've written a script here which will help you extract the surface area for a system like this. The script will be in the description section of this video for you to download and use to calculate the surface area of a system which has an irregular shape like in this instance. So once we get the surface area, then we can calculate the stress being forced divided by the original or that reference surface area and the, dis the strain is your the displacement u divided by l0 so these are the two values that we're going to use to calculate our stress strain data let's now go into abacus and begin this modeling okay so now that gives us the voided system that we are looking for so if we look inside by switching let's say to surfaces you can see it does clear have porosities inside the bulk um, in the way we expect it to be. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a few sets. So if we double click on here, so this is X front set. So that will be selecting the front. So Y top set. So that will be creating the top. And we'll do the same for all the models. So the next thing is that we need to find where we put our reference point. So we're going to use the query button. So to find what this point is, and we see it's 100, 0, and 100. So we're going to create our reference there. So by using, so if we go back to parts module, so tools, uh, reference point. So this will be 120, 0, and 100. So we've got our reference point there, and then we could also create our reference point set. And that will be associated with this. Okay, so we've got that. So the next thing we need to do is to create a step. So we're going to call this our loading step. Okay, and then history output. So our reference point history output. So this will be associated with that. And we're going to create these variables, reaction forces and displacement and then we can then start thinking about boundary conditions so so what i'm going to do is my x back as a roller so we select the back and so we fix it in the one direction so y base roller so that would be in the two direction and Z back roller. And this would be in the third axis. So we fixed it in the normal way. And then we need to apply our load. So I'm going to call this my load. It will change to a loading step and that will be attached to the reference point. And for this first instance, let's do a 20. So this is like 20% loading. So we could go and change the name of that file. So we'll call it voided alum main extends okay so that's for the tensile case so we we'll go back to the extensile case we need to make a connection between this reference point and that face just like it was shown here so how do we do that so we'll create a constraint equation so our constraint i'm going to call this our constraint equation um, and this would be based on coefficients like we showed here the set will look first the x 
front set and the one degree of freedom, one degree of freedom and the reference point and minus one. So just the way it was shown here. Okay, so this now we've made a connection between this and this and the model is ready to run showing extensile deformation. Okay, so this is the first simulation of the extensile case for the porous aluminum media. So if we just animate this a bit so you could see what's happening here. So you see a nice uniform deformation in the uniaxial case for this material. And this is basically the Bobby stress. So if we switch that to the stress purely in the one direction, again, some interesting result. It would really be good if we look at the plastic strain. So if you look at the plastic strain, it does give you, again, some interesting result of what's happening right in the material. And you see stress in distribution across the domain and nice behavior across the whole block with stress concentration. But clearly the void is having an influence on the behavior of the system. So, and this is why this is an interesting kind of simulation that we need to run. So the next thing we need to do is to extract the stress strain properties for this material. So in the first instance here, we find the strain tensile case. So I'll click on this, all right? So for tensile case, the reaction force in the one direction and displacement in one direction is critical. So we'll take that and we'll plot it. So it gives us a really nice distribution of the stresses in the X and Y plane. So then we'll need to bring this out to Excel utilities current plot. So this, what this will do is I will export this data into an Excel data file. So an X, XY data sent to Excel. And if we open our Excel, so we'll see, okay, it's written those data for us. So we'll copy that. So I've already prepared this file containing the information that we need. So if we paste it here, so basically this is time reaction force in X axis, time and displacement in X axis. So we've got that and then we'll get the force data our strain data is also calculated here for us, and our stress data is also calculated here for us. Interestingly, as the actual area of that X phase is also being put in here because I've done this before, but how do we actually get the data for the share for the phase, considering that it's not, we can't really use this. If we use this, this will be around 10,000, which is too much because the phase that we are looking at is actually a voided phase. So it's avoided phase like that. So what we're going to do is to try and see if we can calculate that. So how do we calculate this area on this phase? So the first thing we need to do is to query. So I'll click on that and I want to know exactly what this a point on that phase is. So I could zoom in and pick a point on that phase and click done. So it gives me the data and say that point is 60, 557 and something like that. So I basically need to copy all of that point so control C to copy. Then I already created a Python script, which is this. So that helps to do this. So basically what the Python script asks for is the reference face point that I've copied. So I'll paste it in there. Now, what is the model name? So we'll go back here and look at our model name, voided aluminum main. And what is the part name? Voided alum. Okay. Voided alum is a part name. Voided aluminum name. So we'll supply that because then they could need to work with that. So once we get that information, now it runs through. So the first thing it does is that it finds the model. You can calculate the volume of the model if you want, and then find which instance are we looking at. There's only one instance in the model. And then find the, a point associated with the face. And this is what you see here. And then in the end, it calculates the surface area. So I'm going to copy this. So I'll control C to copy. I'll go back to Abacus, and then I'll paste it here so that it can work out what that value is for me. So if you see right away, it's calculated in the end, it printed out the surface area to be 8139. So I just need to copy that. So that's the surface area of that phase of interest. Then I'll need to go back to my Excel file and change it so I'll paste that value in there. So that means this is the real surface area for that phase, which the code gave me. And again, if you want to learn a little bit more about present volume element modeling and other kind of advanced material modeling, I put a playlist here that you may be interested in looking at. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.